Hi, everyone. I'm James Garbutt. And I'm Denny Duma. And this is the Garbutt Duma Real Estate Podcast. Whistler has always been a favorite spot of mine. Weekend getaways, it, uh, I guess part of the appeal from Greater Vancouver is that it's extremely accessible to people who live in Vancouver, being an hour and a half drive. One thing I don't know a ton about is Whistler real estate, (laughs) but always super curious. And every time I'm up there, I find myself checking MLS of like, what's available? What do prices look like today? How are they so expensive? (laughs) Who's paying for these? So naturally, wanted to chat with uh, our good friend, Nick. Uh, He has been a Whistler realtor for over a decade. 2008. 2008. Yeah. Strange year to start. 50, yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you about it. <laughs> you grew up in Vancouver? No, no. I was, uh, I was Edmonton born and raised. Mm. Um, yeah. So feeling, licking my wounds, <laughs> licking my wounds this morning after last night. But uh, yeah, Edmonton born and raised and then been out in Whistler for 17 years, 17 years since 2006, selling since 2008. So yes, very interesting year to come into real estate. So One thing I did not necessarily know, I guess I would have guessed a high percentage, but you mentioned early that 85% of the Whistler market is Greater Vancouver, vacation homes, rental homes, et cetera. So uh, the reason for this podcast is to update our listeners on what's going on in Whistler, what the market looks like with interest rates at 6%-ish, what investment properties look like in Whistler. So I think we're just going to give like a big summary of what is currently going on. Sure. Maybe let's start with interest rates go up six or uh, four and a quarter percent last year. What did Whistler do? I think like everything or like everyone, it kind of came to a bit of a halt. I mean, once, once ski season was over last year, towards the end of March, beginning of April, everything really did kind of slow down considerably from the from the run-up that we saw um, as we headed in back into summer was summer was actually um, incredibly slow. Hmm. Um, Normally summer we've over the last, what kind of five to seven years, summer has really kind of picked up again. And then obviously there's a run-up into ski season. So we saw a bit of that run-up in September, October, then a bit of November, and then everything just kind of died out. So it does was, real estate naturally move with like the seasons of Whistler? Obviously, summer mountain biking w- and skiing in the winter. Yeah. So those like shoulder seasons. Yeah. Historically, slows? yeah. Historically speaking, you know, as I've I've always found that, you know, especially going into into ski season one, I mean, a little bit different now, but you know, you um, going into ski season you're moving into like revenue season as well. So you don't have to hold on to the property as long without generating any revenue. Right. So there, that tends to be the, the time when the, the majority of the transactions are getting done. Um, there's, you know, I find it's like you're going into like the fourth quarter, there's money in the bank, job secure. Whistler's always been a dream of people, right? And it's like, okay, we're doing it. It's ski season, let's go. Plus like, I mean, there's just nowhere to rent in Whistler either, right? Mm. So um I mean, we got an offer in last night on one of our two bedroom townhouses in in Deer Run. And that was their, in the email, they said they're like, they've been renting for 20 years and they're like, they don't want to do it anymore. They just want their own place. Kids are in ski school. And so, yeah, so that's the, that's generally our our peak period is that kind of September through to December. Um, But it's, it's changed over the last kind of five to seven years for sure. As a listing agent, are you steering people towards like waiting to list until the beginning of ski season then? Because um, I, f- I find, well, I'm thinking that there could be some issues with that too in terms of like scheduling Airbnb or rentals for that season. And then you're selling a property that is currently rented. Are you cutting potential buyers out if they're wanting to use the property during ski season, et cetera? Yeah. I mean, I I tend, I'm I'm always, I think I'm probably more of the mindset that like there's no better time than the present. Um, everybody's got different reasons for selling and, and whatnot. So, I mean, the other thing that we do see, I mean, right now, even like 
being in, what are we in May now? Um, I mean, historically speaking, we've seen inventory levels, you know, rise after after ski season, and we've seen that. But the sales have basically matched hmm. um, the inventory coming on, and that's the biggest issue that we have in Whistler right now. Is there's just there's not a lot of inventory. I mean, we're we're at all time all time lows again, right? So you can say that for Greater Vancouver too. Yeah, January was the lowest number of new listings in Greater Vancouver in. Uh, in any month mm -hmm. since 2004, April was the lowest number of new listings for an April since 2003. Wow. So in Greater Vancouver, I think Whistler's probably feeling the same thing and maybe give me a quick summary, but in the last maybe 60 days, it's gone from slow and steady with no inventory, buyers starting to build up a little bit, activity increasing on listings and open houses to complete frenzy again yeah and like i was mentioning we had a um any listing that is priced correctly it seems like in the majority of neighborhoods is super busy and sells in a week like we had that north van house i was telling you about a couple weeks ago that had 75 showings and yeah. four offers in <laughs> week one then like even uh an area that is slightly saturated for inventory like north surrey there's just a lot of new buildings and a lot of product there a lot of condos we had a one-bedroom condo list last week that sold in four days. Really? And I thought we listed high. Like, if you look at what was available, this was a brand new building, so maybe slightly different, but there's a lot of product that is, like, three to five years old in that neighborhood that yeah. was priced 50K below us. Somehow, it's, everything it sells, is. apparently, but... Yeah. So what's changed? Uh, what does that landscape look like in Whistler in the last, let's say, like, month or two? Um... Yeah, I, I think it's, I mean, our, like I said, our, our, our issue has always been kind of inventory, inventory levels. Um, you know, 10 years ago, we had 600. I mean, to give you kind of an idea and an example, um, after the Olympics in 2010, in April of 2010, everybody hung on for that Olympic windfall revenue. <laughs> and then as soon as it was over, the market got flooded. We had like 1,100 properties for sale in, in Whistler, yeah. Which comparatively to like a typical spring would be what? Well, I mean, to, to give you an idea now, like where we sit today, we're at 180 in all so of 10, Whistler. Oh, well, not 10 times. Yeah. I mean. Say seven times the inventory. Yeah. Two, like go back 10 years to 2013, we were at about 600. Like for us to have a really balanced market, we need kind of 450-ish properties to have a, a balanced market. We're at 100 and I did the newsletter on Friday. We, we're at 180 or 181. Hmm. I mean, I've seen it as low, like in the peak of COVID when all the craziness was going on, we had like 95 Good. properties for sale. So it's like one comes on, it sells. Another one comes on, it sells. We don't have any new development either, right? Like we're maxed out on our bed units. So it's all recycled inventory. So if that answered your question. Yeah. <laughs> Property value. Can you give me like a few different examples of maybe like a one bedroom condo that is in an Airbnb building a two bedroom townhouse a mm -hmm. single like entry level single family home like what do those market values look like today today yeah um so a one bedroom like a one bedroom condo well i can tell you about the one that i just sold in tindlestone lodge sure. so um tindlestone lodge center of the village basically like looking onto the olympic rings right on the stroll uh for those of you like purebred you know where purebred is yep. and yeah okay so it's the one that's above purebred. Um, one bedroom, 550 square feet. They listed it at a million thirty nine. I had a client that found out about it right away before it even hit our, we have the WLS, before it even hit the market. Um, offered subject free, above list. They countered back uh, more above list <laughs> <laughs> and said, if you don't take this, then we're going to relist higher and do a DRPO and all that. So... So we took it, um, but so again, to answer your question, phase one condo in the village, anywhere from 925,000 up to 1.1 okay. uh, is basically kind of where, where things are at from the, from the condo side of things. Uh, a two bedroom townhouse in something like, you know, North Star, Symphony, uh, there's one in Granite Court, uh, that's kind of the main village. And then going up into the Benchlands, there's a little bit more value there, like a ski in, two bedroom ski and ski out 
condo in the Aspens is two million bucks now, two point one. Um, That's crazy. And the, uh, yeah, what square footage was that? Like, like eight fifty. Eight fifty. Yeah. So that's yeah, like twenty five hundred bucks a foot, roughly. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's quite. In- I mean, you go over across the across the mountain to Pinnacle Ridge. It's like, I mean, these are big townhouses. They're you know twenty four hundred square foot townhouses. They're three thousand a foot. It's ski in, ski out, and, and the whole nine yards. But for the most part, like something in North Star, Symphony, uh, Granite Court, you're looking, say one six five up to up to two, depending on the on the property and, and depending on the complex and how it's finished and, and everything else that's in the village. Benchlands, you, there's a little bit more, uh, there's a little bit higher value in the Benchlands. At the peak, I sold, I sold a unit in Black Home Greens right on the first hole of the Chateau golf course there uh, for 2.5. That was January, two years ago. Yeah, at the peak. So, and that's, you know, a thousand square feet and yeah. Um, Nick the, mentioned, oh, one second, I'll, yeah. uh, and then I'll let you update single family. Nick mentioned something called phase one. Uh, we're going to get into that in podcast two, so you're going to have to listen to the next one. Uh, we will talk about that stuff in detail of what properties and where can be Airbnb versus what cannot versus what is phase two. We'll explain all of that stuff, but okay. coming back to updates, market value. Yeah. So going to single family home, like what would an entry level single family home within a... 10 minute drive of the village being. Yeah. I mean, and it depends on what you classify as entry level. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, there's a lot of, uh, I guess, is that just west of the village? North? Just or, north of the village? Maybe? Yeah. Well, there's like, a lot of like those 1970 yeah, okay, so kind of chalets, right? So I did a, a deal last month. Um, the property had actually been on the market for a while. It was a, Built in 1968, 1,500 square feet, nice kind of A-frame. It was, it was in relatively good shape. Mm-hmm. Big lot, you know, 12,500 square foot lot. So lots of potential to do different things with the lot and everything. And they brought it on at 3.2 million. I mean, there wasn't anything, this wasn't renovated or anything like that. Brought it on at 3.2 million. Dropped the price, dropped the price. It was on the, on the market for just over 300 days. And then... Of course, once you drop the price to a certain level, then everybody wants it, right? So there we are in multiple <laughs> offers again. <laughs> and uh, sold for just over 2.5. Okay. And that's, I mean, that's pretty much lot value. I mean, at our height, average price, like in 20, 2020, like height of COVID, 2021, I guess, um, average price was like 4.8 million for a single family. Average, uh, wow. Average. Uh, today we're, what, 3.4 average. We came down a bit, but it's it's starting to creep back up again. Again, there's just, there's no inventory. I did a deal on a house in, I guess, back in October in white gold, um, which is probably the, I would say, top three uh, premier neighborhoods in, in Whistler. Walk to the village, walk to Black Home, all that kind of stuff. Um right on Fitzsimmons Creek, like it was on Fitzsimmons Road South, which is like kind of primo, you know, primo road. Nobody's going to be built behind you. It's all like crown land. You got the view. Uh, house was built in 94, 91, 6.1 million. And he's doing a million and a half dollar renovation on it. So another house down the street um, sold for 8.6. Brand new. All that good stuff. So you actually know the, you probably know the, who the, who the old owner was anyway. I'll tell you later. <laughs> all right. Where is all this money coming from? You mentioned about 85% of people mm-hmm. are coming from Greater Vancouver. Eight, I don't know, multiple five, six, seven, eight million dollar homes. Mm-hmm. Where is this money coming from? I don't know. <laughs> I, know. I mean, no, I'm like, I'm, I'm, it's hard I, to explain. Yeah. It, it, it's pretty crazy. Um, like these are like business owners, what yeah, physicians? Just, who are they coming? Lawyers, from investment guys. Like, I mean, Whistler's got a lot of like kind of who's who in it, right? Um, you know, like the owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, Lou Lemon's there, and Aritzia's there, and you know, people that you you wouldn't necessarily think of, like 
that own businesses and stuff. Like, it's just the, I mean, it seems like it's the place to be. I mean, and it's so easy. I mean, you were saying at the beginning there, um, like Vancouver, you know, in the Olympics, Vancouver got the Canada line, we got the highway. And that just opened everything up for us. I mean, it's easy. You can get to Worcester from downtown in an hour and a half. Yeah. You know, and it's all about lifestyle now. Everybody, everybody wants to live that, live that lifestyle. So where the money's coming from, I have no idea. The bu- majority of the buyers are coming from the lower mainland. Like I said, 80 to 85% of them are coming from the lower mainland. Um, we are seeing more so high-end stuff, like the high, high-end is coming from overseas. So all with the, the Canadian dollar, we probably seem like a very inexpensive investment mm-hmm. for those types of people. Yeah, I mean, the only, the only thing, like when I first got into selling, like, I mean, the, it was the Americans that really buoyed the market from 2003 to 2008. Because at that time, the dollar was like 60 cents. And so, and they were just spending, spending like crazy and, mm-hmm. and coming up there. And I mean, they probably, you know, when the Four Seasons was built in 2005, I bet you it was probably 80% was foreign, foreign ownership. And then, you know, the whole world collapses. And, but it was almost like they hedged against the, against the currency. So what they lost on their sale price from what they paid, they made back on the currency. Because totally. that, you know, from 2009 to 11 or whatever, the dollar went to, to par and above, right? So is anything slow right now? And like, is the high-end luxury stuff that's six, seven, eight, nine million, is that slower? Was that affected at all by the foreign buyer ban in January Well, no, because we don't have it. Whistler's it's- exempt. Whistler doesn't, oh. we don't have, we don't have the foreign buyer ban. We don't have the uh, vacancy tax. We don't, like, we have nothing. Like Whistler is, Whistler and Pemberton are, we don't, we, we weren't affected by any of that. So. For some reason, I thought the foreign buyer ban was all across Canada. It is, except for Whistler and Pemberton. <laughs> huh. Yeah. How it's, does that work? It's a, it's a population thing. And I think because honestly, I think Whistler's like the crown jewel. I mean, from I, I don't know this, like I, I don't don't quote me on this, but I from what I've heard or I mean, Whistler Black Home basically leases the the land for the ski hill and the crown gets a royalty from every from every lift pass and lift ticket and everything else. Like it's you know. So it's in their favor to yeah, keep to it, keep, keep it, it to keep it busy, right? I mean, that's that's what they want. So, um, but yeah, so we don't. There's no there's no foreign buyer ban. There's no we don't have any of that. So, and neither does Pemberton. How is there much new construction outside of Whistler right now? Like, how does it grow? It seems like they're the problem. Like Greater Vancouver is there's very low supply. Yeah, yeah. There's nowhere really. I mean, there's a couple of little pockets throughout. Whistler that, you know, there's single family home construction, but there's no real new development. There's a, a development that's been in the works where the tennis center is in Whistler, kind of near Montebello and yeah. stuff in that vacant area. Um, it's gone through a couple of different developers and there's all sorts of talk all the time about it, but nothing is ever, I think eventually you'll start to see some stuff open up, especially I mean, they need to adjust, address the housing issue, especially for locals and, and all of that. Um, there's a, I don't know if you know where Wedgwoods is, north of the village past Emerald. Okay. It's about, what would be 10 minutes, nine minutes from, uh, from the village. So they've got, I think they're starting their fifth and sixth phase up there. Is that um, kind of around Green Lake? Past Green Lake. Past Green Lake. Yeah, but like on the Green River. I mean when they first started that, oh man, like, I mean, lots in there were, I think they sold as low as like 275,000 to like 350,000. You couldn't even like give it away. And now everything's just, you know, just gets bought up and they build these nice big homes. You get great value out there. Like a house out there that cost, there was one that sold, it was four point, or sorry, five, it sold for five, one, four, eight or five, one, just before, just before Christmas. I mean, that house in Whistler, like right in the main village would be eight to 10. Like there's that much of a difference. So it's like, 
if you want to do that drive, the 10 minute drive to mm -hmm. the, cause if you're not, if you don't have ski and ski out, you're driving anyway. Exactly. You know, so just depends on, on what you want. And it's nice cause you can do, you can do Airbnb out there as well. Which why is there no, um, why is there no new development? Is it the municipality is like dead units? Want it? Yeah. It's what does that mean? It, so basically when the municipality was created, they created, um, a certain number of, of bed units per complex, per neighborhood. Um, and they, they set a cap at it. So there's certain areas that have more allowable bed units. So for development to be built, but they're not creating any more of it. Right. So have they talked about adjusting those numbers? Like as population grows, as they're pretty, they're, they're pretty sticky when it comes, comes to that. There's really not a lot of, like, unless it's there, you know, like, and there's, like I said, there's certain pockets in and around Whistler, but they're not, they're not like, oh, here's, here's more. Like, no. Is there anything on the outskirts of Whistler that is just at the beginning where they're starting to subdivide property, where they're starting to sell off pieces of land? Like, let's say whatever that neighborhood around Green Lake was what? 10 years ago. Yeah, not, I mean, really not, not particularly. There are like, I, I've, I look on the, I guess like on the uh, SLRD website and the the maps and everything, just to kind of see what, you know, exploring, right? Sure. Um, there's a cut, like, I mean, Chequemis, which is just as you get into Whistler. So you got Function Junction on the left, which yep. is the industrial area, and then Chequemis on the right. They are, they're opening up certain pockets in there, but nothing of like significance, right? So... I mean, also like it's tough to, they don't want to either just because of the infrastructure. Like there's just not, yeah, you could, they probably could if they wanted to, but where are you going to put everybody? Like Whistler's kind of busting at the seams as it is. Mm -hmm. And there's such a housing shortage and a worker shortage. And, you know, like restaurants are, you know, they're closing one or two days a week because they can't staff, right? So there's all of this. It, I think eventually it's going to, it should figure itself out, right? But right now, everybody's got different ideas about things. It's probably never been as busy as it is, right? With tourism. No. With people airbnb with nightly rentals. And the, <laughs> it's funny not being able to staff a restaurant and having to close two days a week. Yeah. It's, I mean, I was saying to someone the other day, like when I first moved to Whistler and like, 2006, even up to like, I don't know, say even like 2013, 2014, like you could walk down the village stroll in September at the end of September, you'd see four people and you'd know three of them, <laughs> right? Like now you like walk down at the end of September and it's just like another weekend and you're like, what is going on? Like, you know, it's just, it, and again, it's, it's not just a, like, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not a ski town anymore. Like our summer visits exceed our winter visits. Mm. Like we get more, I mean, winter is still the money-making time. That's when you're getting people coming in for a week to two weeks doing, you know, doing their ski trips and everything. But, um, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not a ski town. We're easy to, to access with that highway now. So it's just, it's very appealing, right? Where do employees rent? Because you were talking about rental numbers recently mm -hmm. and like, the only people that can afford these monthly rental numbers are like super wealthy people. Mm -hmm. Renting a house for seven or eight thousand dollars a month, or in some cases, significantly more than that. Yeah. Like, where do the employees stay? Is there a designated like long term rental for there, employees? There is. Well, I mean, a lot of the like the Fairmont, they have their own staff housing okay. up on base two. The Four Seasons has a little bit of staff housing in their, their complex. You see ads in the peak, which is our local newspaper. You see ads in the peak of, you know, businesses like we need staff housing, right? Like there's just, so there's pockets around, but I mean, it's, it's pretty crazy. Like, you know, people are paying a thousand dollars a month to share a bed in some cases, or at least share a room. So, um, and a lot of people like, I mean, some don't want to rent their places out, but it sits vacant and empty. And 
So there is a, there's definitely a bit of an issue with that right now. Is there many like basement suites or do yeah. some employees live in Squamish maybe and rent like basement suites? More, more Pemberton. Pemberton. If you were like Squamish is a bit, I find is a, there, there are people that do the commute more kind of the business, business professionals. I mean, that's kind of what happened. Like all the people that I kind of grew up with and came up with in Whistler when we all got there in 2004 to 2008, you know, we're all, you know, I came, I worked at the Four Seasons, you know, other, you know, and Buffalo Bills <laughs> for a small, for a short stint, um, bartended there. Um, so everybody that kind of came up at that time all kind of either moved to Squamish or Pemberton um, because that's what they could afford. So it's kind of like here in Vancouver, everything just keeps getting pushed further and further east. You know, same thing in Whistler. It's just like kind of get pushed, you get pushed north. I mean, that's where, you know, in Pemberton, you know, I just had clients that just bought a, I mean, an awesome three bedroom, three bathroom, double car garage, end unit townhouse in Pioneer Junction for 855000 You know, the average price of a, uh, of a phase one townhouse in Whistler is 2.2 million, right? So, and that's, and that's basically the same size without the garage. What's the drive to Pemberton? 30 minutes. 30? Yeah. Yeah. So. Is that very active for rentals? Is Pemberton, Pemberton? Yeah. active for rentals? Uh, I mean, again, it, they're, they're kind of in the same position. Like I'm a member out at, at Big Sky Golf Club and I know like they're, every year they send out an email like, hey, we need staff housing. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's, it's all in the same. Like I don't think there's really much difference from, from one to the other. Like still a housing shortage. Um, still people need places to live. And, and so then, and, and basically what's happening is they're not able to get the workers because no one's got anywhere to live. Totally. And that was kind of what happened when I moved here in 2006, like you'd open up the peak and there's like pages and pages of jobs and there was nowhere to live, you know, I, and I got lucky, you know, I, I got into the, into Adventures West where the original Whistler was like supposed to be, where the original keg was. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got in, we were right on, I was right on the river of golden dreams <laughs> for the first six years. One of our clients has a house that kind of like backs onto that river. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, I think the street is called Easy Street. Yeah. 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 Easy Street. Yeah. Easy, is, easy and Balsam yeah. are kind of like, right. Yeah. It's like a fairy tale. He lives on yeah. Easy Street backing onto the river of golden dreams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had a client that bought that, uh, they're just finishing building a, a house on there. They, they bought, well, I guess probably about five or six years ago now, an old, old A-frame and everything. I mean, where I lived in Adventures West, I had a one bedroom. There was these like, one building was all two bedrooms and then the other four buildings were one bedrooms on the end and then studios in the middle. And I think the one that I lived in sold for, 275,000 back in like 2012. I mean, my client originally, I think paid 72,000 for it. Crazy. And then now these, you know, one bedroom in there will sell for 750,000 just to be, actually, I got a good story if you want one. Of course. So right next, so I was on Adventures, I was in Adventures West Riverside. So that's where the River of Golden Dreams started. Okay. And then so next door was Adventures, Rep, Adventures West Lakeside. Um, and these are all, and again, these are all built like 1968 to 1972. It was like one of the original stratas, like when hmm. the strata corp was, in, was created. These were some of the original ones in, in BC. So I get a call from a previous client of mine. She's like, I've got one of my good friends. She, you know, her husband has passed, you know, since passed away, wants to uh, list her property in Adventures West Lakeside, original owners. And like this unit is pretty much original. It's like a one bedroom. It was a one bedroom and loft with one bathroom with the sink outside of the bathroom, basically <laughs> like appliances are original. Like they filled in part of the floor, but like, but you open up the patio door and you are looking at Alta Lake. Like, you're 30 feet from the shore of, of the lake, you know? And again, built in 1968, like 68, 72, basically a tinderbox. And like, 
and this is at the height of of COVID and the whole craziness and everything. So they're like, well, what do you think we should list out? And I was like, well, I said, this is a tough one. I was like, you know what? I said, my, I think 995, but I think it could go, it could go really high. And they're like, okay, we'll do it. So we go 995 and sure enough, five offers and this thing, the, it sold for, and this is like 525 square feet sold for 1.403. And five offers. So it was pretty crazy. And again, business owner, like kind of what we were talking about. So anyway, sorry, I got sidetracked there. Where do values go from here? Like in five years from now, that one bedroom condo, maybe that was at the peak. So 1405, mm-hmm. maybe that now is what, 1.25? Uh, that one's a tough one because like there's just lakefront is a different beast. It's sure. like ski and ski out. Like you just, I don't, somebody will always pay for that. Like to be able to open up your door and walk in, walk out onto the lake. Uh, but, you know, something like a Tindlestone Lodge or, or a North Star, you know, like a one bedroom in North Star um, recently sold for a million fifty. Um, I mean, I, I, you know, you, over the last 10 years, we've probably, we've been saying like, oh, can't go any higher. Can't do this. Can't do that. You know, you just, you just see it, right? Like it's just, I mean, I thought our run up was done. I mean, in the last 10 years, you know, one bedroom townhouse or condo in Whistler has increased 264%. So, wild. right. So where does it go from there? Do you like, does it plateau? Cause we saw the plateau, you know, I mean, we had our, our run up kind of 2017 was like the last kind of before COVID and everything was kind of a, our big peak. And then everything kind of plateaued to 2019. And then, you know, in September of 2020, we had 375 properties for sale in Whistler. And then COVID happened, nobody could go anywhere and gone. Everybody just bought it up. So it sounds like, well, I mean, it is the same issue that Greater Vancouver has. We don't have enough doors for how many people that want to live here. Mm -hmm. And Whistler is like an interesting combination of overflow equity buildup from Greater Vancouver, mm-hmm. plus also this worldwide recognition now mm-hmm. from the Olympics of this like world elite ski resort that mm-hmm. now is not just a ski resort, that is now a vacation home, that is now a, mm-hmm. you know, summer vacation spot. Um, it just seems like the issue of supply versus how many people want to enjoy Whistler and spend time there doesn't sound like the municipality has any interest in in addressing that issue not really I mean <laughs> from from what I can see and I I keep a pretty like I'm I'm I watch from afar but and I don't get too too involved or anything but yeah they they seem to have their own I don't know if agenda is the right word, but their own kind of whatever that they're doing. And yeah, they're just, we're not seeing that. That's that place to put people really. So last thing on this one, do you think, um, I haven't heard an update recently on the ski resort, potential ski resort in Squamish. Mm. What's that mountain called? Garibaldi? Yeah. Gar- Garibaldi, right? Yeah. It's the, um, the Gallardis that I, I believe are heading that up or whatever. Aquilini, right? I thought it was Aquilini. Was it Aquilini? I think it was. Okay. Anyway, One regardless. Of the two. If that, when that eventually comes into existence, does that diminish the demand on Whistler real estate? I don't know. I You know what's funny? I had a, a client of mine I was showing property to um, from Ottawa and he asked me a bunch of questions on it and I haven't followed that one too, too much, but one of the agents in our office in Squamish has, has followed it. And, um, by the sounds of things, nothing's going to happen for a while. A while. Yeah. Um, if it does, I mean, there's just so many people coming here. I I think if anything, it just helps. Right. And then it's going to, I mean, it'll just bring more people here. I mean, I mean, it's just so busy now. Like you drive up and down that highway. Like I come down, I leave Squamish yes, when, yesterday morning. 
at like 10.30 and I'm driving past the gondola, like the parking lot to the gondola, packed. <laughs> I mean, it's packed all the time, right? Like it's just, there's just people. We're just, we just have lots of people here. I mean, I mean, it is one of the most desirable places in the world. It's got to be top five places in the world to be, you know? And plus with all the immigration that Canada is allowing in, you know, like I think, what was it last year? It was 400,000, if that's right. I Canada. think it was more into Canada yeah. last year. Or a million? I think it? it was close to a million. And yeah. I think into Greater Vancouver was like 80,000 or something like yeah. that. Which is, and they, they're estimating another million for the next five years each year. Yeah. So and it's so, like, where do they, so, right? You got to put them somewhere. Like, My guess is that that resort, whenever it comes in, let's say it's a decade or more away. But my guess is that it just becomes more of a tourist destination. Yeah. Now people from like other parts of the world are planning trips to Whistler and Garibaldi, you know, whatever the yeah. ski resort is going to be called up there. But yeah, yeah, you can almost jump around, right? You totally. can do your, you know, you can go get your night skiing in at Seymour and then go up to Garibaldi and then finish the trip off at the, you know, in Whistler. So. It's beautiful up in that. I know where it's going to be. It's, it's beautiful back there. But I mean, that's, that's a long way away from happening. I think so. I would think. If you're thinking about investing or purchasing Whistler, next podcast is going to be all about investing, difference between phase one, phase two, and how to look for those properties. But uh, questions about Whistler real estate, Nick is my go-to guy. Check out his Instagram, which is Nick S. H. Whistler Realtor. We'll throw that in the podcast notes.